Been good so far? Yeah, thank you. It's interesting learning how to engage the separate muscles. Yeah. Mm. From what I've been taught. It's completely different, isn't what it? You, what have you been taught? Like, yeah, like over the years with the training that I used to do and seeing, yeah, just engaging those singular muscles, yeah, it makes a huge difference to the movement. And, yeah. And then this one, while well, I think of it, it's, it's hard to get up, right? Like when you try to sit up, the quads engage, and then they go straight into your, uh, well then your abs engage, so you've got these big muscle groups overlapping and locking on. And so you end up stiff as a plank with your, with your um, back. So to try and loosen up, you grab hold of your knees. And so rather than doing, this is the worst, when people do crunches with someone holding onto your feet, and then again, you're just, Relying on the big hip flexors and the back. So you grab your knees and exhale and try and get your belly button to drop. Especially some tight. And then you start rolling that one vertebra at a time, trying to hold on your legs. That's a bit much for me. Hold on to those knees. That's when I took you to that yoga class. <laughs> you just hang on to your knees as long as you can. Even if, I'll get you back up. Even if, Good. even if it's like this, hang on to your knees, exhale. If you don't feel like you can let go, just keep hanging on to your knees and gently roll back. Just think of one vertebrae at a time mm. when you roll back. I'm proud of you. Mm. That's <laughs> really it's hard to let your yeah, bell back go. Yeah, you guys are holding your muscles tight around there yeah. because you want to protect it. Because I know what it's like with my ankle, and I'm like, I can't do that. I'm like, oh, it's okay. But just relax. <laughs> Hold your knees and rock back. There you go. How's that? Pretty stiff. <laughs> Pretty scary. I feel like I'm just being in and I'm just it's all straight. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tips. So, yeah, there's that position. And then yeah, you practice that just in your cat cow. Has some work to do, but all those positions, so uh, there's no like better one than the other. They all have a little different uh, different feedback. You've got the four for feedback, you've got gravity to work against. Now if your hamstring, well just real quickly, yeah, if your hamstrings are, are tight and, and it's just a simple test is just to lift one, one leg up and see how far it comes. If you can only get to there, then that's your limitation. So when you try to bend and you have the, and you can't lift the leg up, then obviously you're only going to bend as far as you can lift the leg straight up. Go, so go straight? Back, go back down, lift it straight. Yeah. Even that can be hard on the back, a bit scary. Do you want to point my toes? Oh, no. Cool. This yeah. one's tighter. It's tight, than it's awesome. Yeah, so you girls are above like 70 degrees, but Danny here quite tight. So you imagine you try to um, bend over to pick something up. If you have to get past that <laughs> range of motion, then you're going to start bending through your lower back. <laughs> he doesn't bend over to <laughs> Yeah, because you've got about 30, 40 degrees of range there. It's not real good, is it? It's a common thing with older men, yeah. Hamstrings. There's so many men can't stretch their legs out. I've seen generally, you know, my husband is probably a bit so. So, come on up. Even sports players and like stuff can often still be really tight in their legs. So, it's like they don't stretch their legs. Yeah, it's because they. Yeah, they feel big and strong and everything. And then you bend so far, the hamstrings get tight, so you start to roll through your back, and then you have to start picking things up like this. They say bend with your knees, not your back, but you really should just keep your, your back neutral. So like I said, if I put my belly button in here now to pick something up, I'm gonna go and get me around. So I wanna keep that straight, strong back, 
and then exhale to pull the belly button into my lower back, and then I can go ahead and lift. So you really want to lift from the hips and, and lift from your glutes. Because to pick something up like this, to bend my knees and not my back, means I have to bend down like this to pick something up. And then the worst, you know, hunch over. But soft knees, belly button out, and bend. And so naturally, everything's going to be somewhere between deadlift is like so, or stiff legged deadlift even, keep the legs really rigid. And then a squat is to keep your chest up and, and squat on down. And then you've got the load up here to pick something up. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. <coughs> Some sort of variation of this. And when it comes to your ankle mobility, whether you can squat safely, they used to say uh, people's, people would not have the ankle flexibility. They'd come in and to compensate, the foot would collapse and they go inside their knee. So a bunch of people squatting feet out like this so they can get the depth but you're just pronating, going inside the foot. So they said, oh, you know, you can't go past your toes, it's really bad. But your knee should be able to go past your toe. And to do that assessment, you bump up against the wall. And then you'll look down over your toes and see how far you can get your knee to touch. And then you come back a little bit, you go further. So if this line's the wall. And so obviously your ankle doesn't allow you to do that at the moment, but you keep progressing. But when you're going for these calf stretches, always make sure your knee's outside your toes. So you can do a calf raise where you're on a small step and you go down for that stretch. And then as you come up, oh, going down yet, you want that stretch. So you're on a step. For this example, you can just try to flex through your ankles, but you're always trying to keep your knees outside your big toes. So your knees a little bit wide, as you bend on down, you can feel a stretch in your calves. And then when, so this can be on a, like I said, on a step. I got nothing in my calves. That's what I want. I messed up. On a step, it's the same thing. I go down like this. And then standing, you just got to stretch. You're not going to feel as much of a stretch this way, but as you come up, same thing. Just nice alignment, keeping your knees out nice and wide. Come on down, have that stretch without feeling your knees knocking. Just try to hold those knees out a bit wider. Good. <laughs> then, this is best bang for your buck exercise. When you go to bend over and you're not feeling that glue, yeah, we're going to get up on one leg, soften the knee, lift that leg up. And you can use the surface to try and get down. You're going to make sure that Gonna make sure that this knee, knee stays soft and this hip is rolled down. That was the biggest difference for you. Like you said, was making sure that that other hip was down and that right there, like I said, the glute has two jobs. One is that external rotation. So if your knee's locked out, locked out and pointing in, your glute's off. If it's soft and turned out, now the glute's engaged and now you're challenging to keep your knee in, in alignment through a sensible range of motion, which is bending through the hip. Just tell me what I was doing earlier. Are oh, you lifting that hip up? Lifting that flat, okay, opening up. So if you're facing a mirror, then you've got a good angle yeah. of sight to watch your knee, or you can just peer down your nose, make sure that knee is staying nice and wide, drop that <laughs> right hip. <laughs> you can do this so many ways. You can find something slippery, you slide that back foot back as far as you can, and then bring it up. You've got the hand surface, you can come down and settle onto a, a bench. And when you're feeling that wobble through your knee, that's your glute learning to turn on fire a bit quicker. So this is, this is where the, the pinch comes in. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. But it's not too bad at the moment because it seems like it's warmed up. It's got more stretching. See so right now you're bending and bending and bending through this. What am I doing? Just bending my legs. Oh, you're bending in your lower back a lot. Okay. So just try to. <laughs> you come over to the bench and bend down because you get to that certain point and then the, the pelvis starts to go. So you're trying to keep keep going down forward. And especially when you come up, you're going to drop that knee. So keep bend your elbows, get on down. Bend, 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 bend. Yeah, don't strangle the bench, just rest on it. So you're going to lower this right hip, and that's going to soften that knee, turn it out right up in the arch. Now you feel that on. 
yeah. then when you come up, you're going to exhale, squeeze from here, and lift from right in there. So unbalanced, it just feels hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You're unbalanced and you have sciatica and back pain because the glute doesn't turn off. Yeah. So we're meant to engage so, our glutes. Is this one? It was so hard to get back if up. If you don't engage your glute, you're going to be flat on the floor. Okay. I'm trying to concentrate a lot much. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this one you don't really have to. Just let's see it again. I'm trying to make sure that I don't move my hips when I do it. Because it's one of those things where I want to move my hips. Yeah. So that's it. In what way do you want to move your hips? What? Well, if I don't do that, then my hips move when I try to do this. I'll rotate my legs out to yeah, get yeah. out there yeah. instead of going straight. I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach out with that hand because that allows that to happen. I take the opposite hand, and depending on your range, I, I try to reach down. Oh, it's weird. I can't do it. That's, that's the way. Yeah. And the balance doesn't come easy. No, it doesn't anymore. Not when you're engaging with the right muscles. Feel free to join in, Eloise. I'm so used to like opening my hips, I think, from Taekwondo. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm with you because we didn't hip openers in skating. Yeah, of hip yeah. opening yeah. Yeah. techniques. Yeah, so it's yeah. Weird. when I lift Make my legs. Sure you stay straight. You guys like this. <laughs> Because we did things with our hip flexors that you're not meant to do. I've been working, so, on, yeah. working on the external and the glute for so long, but like that tight, a tight muscle is a weak muscle, so that one that caused all these problems. I, I had an exam done and I had like zero ex internal rotation. So I've been so long working on the external rotation, but zero internal, so all tight. So if I were you, I'd use the bench. Mel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's easier. So, so, without reaching your shoulders forward, you keep your shoulders retracted back and then come down and touch the bench. Just make sure your foot's on an even surface. It's so hard to Which keep you? my hips straight. Because I've been having trouble with this since I started walking again. Yeah. So, yeah. Look at my legs shaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't want to hold me. I'm trying my bad ankles together. Well, see, you're not flexing through your ankle. So, it's a perfect exercise. Get your ankle balancing, that's it, retract those shoulders, roll that hip down, that's it, your knees now going out, 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 good, and then come up using your, keep that leg straight, use your glute and your belly button. Good, fantastic. Can I get on the bench, husband? Spasm going on. My, new, like my newest addition to this exercise is you bend on down and then this glutes on and everything. As you come through, <coughs> like when you're walking, when you're hiking and things like that, um, you take a big step up and this is a great movement because it's impossible to keep that knee relaxed and in. As you bring this hip up, you're going to have to extend and now you're actually getting a full extension through the hip and, and the glute has to engage so you get a good stretch and engagement. So if you're not using anything for balance, you can come on through, stretch it out, and then come on and bring that knee right up and that hip will have to engage. The knee will be out. <coughs> you try and squeeze and hold it there. Everybody, this is Elise. Hi. Hi, Elise. <laughs> Mel, Danny, and Lisa. That was pretty easy. Danny, Dan, Elise, <laughs> Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Please, no, Melissa. I think you're busy now. Yeah. Danny. Oh, I'm always more confusing now. I'll see you later. Up, 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 squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. That's actually how I did my hip flexor when I was bushwalking. And I would climb up a big boulder and I did my hip flexor. And I had a toddler on my back. And I had to walk all the way back into myself, Kate, with her on my back. And my oh, hip was caning yeah. the whole time. And so it's interesting that that's getting again now. I've learned to walk again. So, yeah. It's obviously it's always been weak, a, a week. Yeah. 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 Week from the beginning. Let's see it. So what am I doing? Just bringing Up, up, up. Let's hold it. Hold up, it up, 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 up. Yeah. Because his ankle is still pretty weak. No, no, the, this knee is still locked until so you get to this point and then you lose your balance. So I want to see you come up so far that you have to soften that knee a little bit and start turning it out. 
Up, 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 up. That's better. Now you